Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 9 verse 16 as well as Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for helping us to be honest with ourselves. Lord God, we know even that comes from you. All good things come from you. Thank you Father, in Jesus name. Amen. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Joshua chapter 9, verse 16. At the end of three days, after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. This is one of the ones where in, in the Bible where you hear that dun, dun, dun. Because this is when um, the leaders of Israel had um, made a covenant with Gibeon, right? And uh, it was a couple of different cities, but Gibeon was the main one that they always mentioned. And so um, here, the they had quickly made a covenant too quickly, and um, they would never be rid of them. <laughs> so, um, and so it says at the end of three days, they had made a covenant with them. So remember they wore the worn out sandals. They had the old wine skins, um, their bread, they had gotten gathered old bread and, and came to them and, and deceived the children of Israel and told them, you know, that they had came from very, very, very far off in that, you know, so far that they all the wine skins have burst and it's just, it was a long journey for them and to make a covenant with them because, you know, they were so far away anyway, it, it wouldn't matter. And of course, the children of Israel took the contents of what they gave and the bread and everything and with their own judgment, with their own minds, with their cerebral thinking, with their, you know, this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. We can do this, you know, um, mindset uh, without consulting God. They made a covenant with them. And then it says they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. So in other words, they would not go through and conquer, completely conquer the way that the Lord had told them to. So they would forever um, have these people among them. And um, they actually, because of the, the covenant that they made with them, they became the cutters of wood and the drawers of water for um the the children of Israel and so I, I think for the temple specifically. So um it says that that they lived among them. Yeah and so the conflation scripture here today is Philippians 4 3, 4 12. I know that I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And so the um, conflation here today with Gibeon that the Holy Spirit was showing me was that um, flexibility, right? In every situation that we have as Christians, we need to be the most flexible party, right? Not flexibility in disobedience, but flexibility in the consequences for our disobedience. We need to be flexible in, in you know, because if we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, then we're going to be flexible. We need to be flexible with the Holy Spirit at all times, right? If if we are going in one direction and the Holy Spirit says, ah, nope, I need you to stop what you're doing and I need you to do it like this. Mm -hmm. We need to be flexible enough to stop what we're doing, get out of self, get out of carnality, get out of flesh get out of but I'm doing this and stop what we're doing be mature enough to stop what you're doing and do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do so um, we have to be able to stop midstream right is is what it boils down to 
even after you have already taken the first steps, even after you have already um, done the wrong thing, we need to be able to stop midstream, repent, and turn away from the things that are keeping us from God or keeping us from completing the task in a way that the Holy Spirit is guiding us in. All right, and it says, I know what it is to be in need right? It, it, you, we've all been in need. We've all, all been in situations um, where we have needs that need to be met. We have bills that need to be paid. We have emotional needs. We have physical needs, hunger, right? I, I can remember when me and my husband first moved to DC and my brother was with me as well. We all moved up there and, you know, we had no money. We were like so severely broke. And like, you know how as a young person, you um, you try to your best to budget, right? We, you got enough for rent. You have enough for gas to get you there. You have enough um, to make sure you pay your deposit. You have enough to pay for the rental truck. You have enough to do all these things, but you forgot about food, <laughs> Or you forgot about, you know, oh, what if this happens or what if that happens? And we didn't have um, the, the, the young lady wouldn't let us into our apartment. So we ended up having to get a um, hotel for the first night. And that really threw our whole budget off completely. And we didn't have any money to buy food after we moved into the apartment. And so... Yeah, we had to learn what it was to be in need and to be a person, you know, who doesn't face needy situations very often as far as like not having an actual meal to eat, <laughs> you know, like uh, we for once we were like kind of back against the wall. We didn't have any any food. And it says, I know what it is to have plenty. We've been in situations more than more than a few where we, we had plenty of food to eat. But for once, we were just in a situation where God had to provide and provide he did. <laughs> he was amazing. And I, I think I've told you guys the testimony of that before. But anyway, so God made a way and we ate. And, you know, it. God is just amazing like that. He, we have to be flexible enough to have a need. We have to be flexible enough to have plenty. We have to be flexible enough to make baloney do, you know, we have to be flexible enough to say, wow, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get by with this, right? And, and learn how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and stop midstream if we've gone in the wrong direction. It says, I have learned the secret of being content in e any and every situation. We have to learn how to be content, right? We have to learn how to, when we're sleeping on the floor and we don't have a bed, be grateful that we're sleeping indoors, right? Be grateful that, you know, I have a pillow, or if you don't have a pillow, be grateful that you're sleeping indoors. <laughs> you know, there are there are plenty of situations where we've been in need, right? And you know what? The the key is, you know, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. That is Philippians 4:13, which is the next verse. But it, it's through Christ that we can be strengthened, right? That is the key to the conflation, is that we when we know we've done wrong or or even if we haven't done wrong and we're just facing a need or or facing a circumstance we know how to be content why because our strength comes from Christ he allows us and helps us to face every circumstance whether in need, whether in want, whether hungry, whether well-fed, whether having plenty or a little, right? It's all in Christ. It, we have to learn how to be content and he'll show you, he can give you that. If you ask him that, um, Lord, I want you to show me how to be content in every circumstance. He will show it to you, right? He will show you that you can make it, you can endure if you have him with you. Amen. And so um, that is the conflation. It 
flexibility in every situation. Why? Because strength to be flexible comes from the Lord. What to do when you are deadlocked in a situation of your own creation. Be content and be flexible, right? You may have created this situation. You may have been the completely guilty party, right? This situation that you've gotten yourself into, your family into, um, your life circumstances into, but the key is to be flexible, right? Because you can do all things through Christ. You can conquer this hurdle. You can conquer a poor decision. You can even conquer a poor covenant that has been made, right? As as with Joshua and the children of Israel, um, they had to get through this, right? There was no need in just killing all the people outright and being like, oh, well, you know, you lied to us so we can kill you. No, they learned how to be in the deadlock, right? They, 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 hey, you know, you got to know when to fold them, right? They had to fold them in that circumstance. And, and, you know, they, they had been outwitted by the enemy, but, you know, even in that circumstance, they, they just went ahead and went with the covenant because they didn't want to be cursed. And so they, they, you know, chose to make them cutters of wood and drawers of water. So, you know, we just have to trust in God, right? In our circumstance and know that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful word. Thank you for this conflation, Lord. This is amazing. <laughs> Help us to remember to be flexible for you. We love you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.